Hi, I'm Brad with the experimental sales team at Garmin, and welcome to our virtual AirVenture Oshkosh experience. Today, we're in Garmin's RV7A to overview some of the products we have for your experimental or LSA aircraft. Hop inside with me and we'll take a look. Garmin's RV7A has an instrument panel equipped that is a very great example for IFR flight in our experimental aircraft as well as LSA flight trainers. Today we are operating the avionics system in demo mode and we are sitting inside a hangar so you might see some messages on the IFR navigators that we do not have GPS signal. In front of the pilot we have the GDU 460. This is a G3X touch flight display in a 10.6 inch landscape orientation. Over on the right side for the co-pilot, or as a backup display for the pilot, we have the G3X Touch 10.6 inch multifunction display with EIS indication. That is our engine information system. In the center panel, we have a GMC 507 dedicated autopilot controller, a GTN 650XI IFR GPS navigator with integrated Navcom radio, a GNC 355 IFR navigator with integrated comm radio, and a GMA245 Bluetooth enabled audio panel. Over on the left side, we have a G5 electronic flight instrument, which serves as a backup flight instrument for the G3X Touch, but it can also serve as a dedicated flight instrument on its own. In front of the pilot, we have the G3X Touch 10.6 inch primary flight display. This is laid out in traditional fashion as other glass flight display systems. On the left side, we have the airspeed tape with data such as indicated airspeed, V speeds, ground speed, as well as corrected true airspeed. Over on the right side, we have our altitude tape that includes our barrow corrected altitude, barrow setting, vertical speed indication, as well as the altitude bug for autopilot use or simply a selected altitude use. In the front and center, we have our artificial horizon. You can see this is overlaid on synthetic vision. Synthetic vision is great because it gives us geographical features such as rivers, valleys, mountainous terrain, etc. On the bottom center of the flight display is our slip skid indicator. In the center is our flight director bars. And at the very top and center, we have a roll indicator as well as autopilot flight control system. On the bottom center of the flight display, we have our HSI with lateral navigation information and bugs for heading as well as selected course for VOR, ILS, or GPS navigation. On the left side of the HSI, we have additional indicators for flat position settings, trim settings, as well as crosswind component vectors while we're in air. The primary flight display also includes inset windows that are adjustable. You can see on the left side, we have a moving map display. Over on the right side, we have a traffic page. However, accessing the primary flight display options using the menu key, we have choices to turn those inset windows off, as shown, or if you prefer to have additional data, such as nearest airports, flight plan, map settings, etc., we can simply pull one of those inset windows up here on the bottom right or bottom left side of the primary flight display. We also have indications for cast messages. Those are crew alerting systems. If there's any sensor gone awry on your aircraft, it will enable you and alert the pilot on the primary flight display. Along the bottom of the primary flight display, we have two dual concentric knobs as well as soft touch keys for nearest and direct to functions for our basic navigation, a menu key for accessing primary flight display options or additional features on G3X Touch, and a back key in order to back out whatever menu or page that we are currently on in order to return to the main screen of the primary flight display. You will notice on the dual concentric knobs, they are currently functioning as heading and altitude bugs, as well as a barrow setting knob. As we move through the multifunction display pages on G3X Touch, these will change their functions. 
any item that is outlined in gray on the primary flight display is a touchable feature. However, any touchable feature on the flight display can be accessed by using the button and knob commands along the bottom of the bezel of the primary flight display. On the G3X Touch primary flight display, we have several multi-function display options as well. We will begin on the top left corner of the flight display. In the top left corner, we have options for comm radio control. This multifunction feature of the G3X touchscreen can control either a remote mounted comm radio or the radio as installed on a panel mount radio or one of the GTN IFR navigators. It's a very simple interface to use. By selecting the standby frequency on the primary flight display, it will now bring up the split screen multifunction display controls for the comm radio. You can now see that the dual concentric knobs have changed their function. We now have a volume and push the squelch function, as well as tune frequency and hold the transfer. From this page, you can tune a comm radio frequency like a traditional panel mount radio. You can touch to type a frequency if you so choose to do that. Or we can use a very convenient find feature. This will access the databases on the G3X touch flight display to access items such as recently used comm radio frequencies, nearest airports, flight plan frequencies, or user defined frequencies. For an example, we'll take a look at one of the nearest airports to us. You can see the New Century Air Center is the field we're currently on. By going to select frequency, it's going to bring up a list of frequencies for that airport. If I decide I need the ground control frequency, I simply select ground control frequency and it automatically places that in the standby frequency of that radio. You can also see it is enunciating the frequency that I just selected. By touching COM1, this is now going to flip-flop that COM frequency on the radio. You can see over here on the GTN IFR navigator that has selected that KIXD ground frequency in my comm radio. I can simply flip flop that comm frequency to that panel mount device. So that's one way we can really conveniently use the databases loaded in G3X touch to control a panel mount radio in a little easier fashion. Similarly, we can do that with nav frequencies as well. If we are equipped with a panel mount nav comm radio, it's a very simple interface as well. We're just tuning a VHF nav radio for VOR or ILS uses there as well. On the top center of the primary flight display, we have user selectable data fields. You can see currently we have waypoint distance as well as bearing to the waypoint on the very top and center. If you prefer to have an additional data piece up there, such as ground speed, height above ground level, time to the destination, you can select those in there as well. Moving over on the farther right side of the flight display, you can see we have audio panel controls as well. You can see similarly to the comm radio selections, we can control either a remote mount audio panel or the panel mount audio panel shown here, which is the Bluetooth enabled GMA 245. Top and center is a very convenient mic one or com one switch function. By selecting mic or com, this will change which radio we are either transmitting or listening to. And it shows us the green arrows for very convenient visual cues of which one we're currently on. By selecting the audio key on the multifunction display of the G3X Touch, this is gonna bring up the audio and intercom controls. You can see this is a very easy and dedicated interface for the audio panel, which we can switch between comm radios, switching of nav radios as well, a very convenient split comm feature, which is unique to the GMA245. This means the pilot and co-pilot can be speaking on different radios if you have a two crew airplane. A very convenient playback feature for ATC audio recordings. In case you missed the last ATC transmission, you don't have to ask for them to repeat themselves. Come in here and you can hit the play button and that will play the last recorded audio message that we've received from ATC. Moving over to the intercom page, you can 
quiet down the passengers if you need to isolate the pilot or the crew. You can also handle phone and media pairings if you want to play music from a portable device such as a mobile iPhone, iPad, another audio MP3 player, or handle your Bluetooth pairings in case you want to pick up phone calls right through your G3X touch system when interfaced to that audio panel. We also have a music input selection key that we can change sources, whether it's using that from a Bluetooth audio source or from onboard XM radio as well. On the top right of the primary flight display, you can see we also have a COM2 radio control. Up to two COM radios can be controlled from the G3X Touch flight display. That's not required, but if you happen to need a remote mount COM radio because you don't quite have the panel space is needed in the aircraft, we can remote mount a second COM radio and control that from the primary flight display. All of these controls will mimic what we do on the radio stack of the aircraft. For example, if I need to change a comm radio on my audio panel, you can see by use, using the dedicated touch feature of the GMA245, that change will reflect on the primary flight display of the G3X Touch. Similarly, if I change the comm radio frequency on the GTN650XI, that change will also reflect on the comm page of the G3X Touch flight display. So really we have two different places that we can control the functions of the electronics on the aircraft. On the very top right of the primary flight display, we have the split page function. This is going to be a shortcut to the multi-function display features of the G3X Touch system. Similarly, we can select that to go to full screen mode of the primary flight display, or you can use the dedicated back button key to go back to full screen. What's really nice about the dedicated inset windows of the primary flight display system is those are shortcuts. By selecting the specific inset window for the G3X Touch, it will shortcut me to that specific page I select within the multifunction display features. Beginning on the primary flight display, you can see we have a base map navigation function for G3X Touch. This is a database that gives us a very nice and easy to read basic VFR map. You can see we have features such as airspaces, traffic, airports, geographical features such as terrain shading, highways, cities, etc. There are several different choices here on the map display that we can use for pilot information. It is zoomable by the dual concentric knob on the flight display, or it is movable by dual pinch zoom and single point touch on the map display. If you choose an airport on the flight display, it's gonna bring up the airport information. You can see we're looking at Lawrence, Kansas here. And I have quickly accessed the databases within G3X primary flight display system to show me a lot of different data pieces for this airport information. We will go over this data here later on in the presentation. So the choices on the multifunction display include the base map navigation page. By using the dual concentric knob, I can move over to a chart page. These pages can also be changed by touch selecting the bottom of the primary flight display and giving me a shortcut to the page that I specifically request. On the chart page, this gives us a very familiar VFR sectional that we typically would see from the FAA, a traditional sectional chart if you prefer to navigate off of one of those. By just a couple selections on the G3X Touch primary flight display and the soft touch keys, I can select an IFR chart and I now have an IFR in route low chart for IFR flying. Moving over on the G3X Touch flight display and the multifunction displays features of the system, I now have a waypoint feature. This brings up that familiar waypoint information page that we accessed earlier directly from the map page. You can see we've selected the current airport, which includes data such as MSL elevation, as well as the services available at that airport, location, as well as time zone of the airport, bearing and distance to my current location, 
as well as GPS coordinates for that airport. On top of the basic information of where the airport is, we also have detailed waypoint information for that specific airport. You can see we have dedicated frequency pages that we can select any frequency available at that airport and send those to COM1 or COM2 radio equipped on the aircraft. We can select runways that are available at the airport, pilot controlled light frequencies, type of surface and distance and width of the runway that we have so selected, left traffic or right traffic patterns for the specific runway of what we have selected, and a very handy crosswind component for the airport selected. This is gonna show you the best runway to use, give you the crosswind component of that runway based on the latest weather data that the aircraft is receiving within the system. There is a dedicated weather page that gives you all of the information for the decoded current METAR as received from either XM weather data or the free weather that we are receiving from ADSBN, which is the free ADSB weather data from the FAA. We also have the decoded terminal area forecast for that airport. That way, while you're en route and maybe a couple hours away, you can see what the weather is doing at the field and what it's forecasted to be. Any current NOTAMs that we have for the runway, in case there's a TFR, runway closures, lighting obstacle, any type of data that we would typically receive in a NOTAM, we have that handy and available here. We have available an airport facilities directory from AOPA. You can find data such as services here, current phone numbers for FBOs on the field that are accessible, as well as additional data such as flight service station frequencies, approach frequencies, navigation aids, or even phone numbers to the closest restaurants to the field. On the bottom, we have a charts feature. We have very handy airport diagram information for taxi diagrams, which are also geo-referenced for my GPS location on the field. This is also where I'm gonna access IFR approach plates if I need to select one of those for an IFR approach into the airport. You can see this is also geo-referenced for a location on the field or while we are in air and in route along the IFR approach plate. I also have a selection to bring this into a larger view for my primary flight display. Here I can brief the approach, select frequencies, and see what type of data I need in order to prepare myself for the IFR approach into the airport. Moving over one page, we have a flight plan information page. You can toggle between the internal capabilities of basic VFR navigation and mapping functions of the G3X touchscreen, or from an external GPS, such as using the flight plan from an external source, such as a GTN IFR navigator or a two inch GPS IFR navigator as shown here in the center stack of the RV7A. This is gonna show any airport information that I have loaded into the flight plan of the G3X touch system or the IFR navigators that I'm using from an external source. Moving over one page, we have a dedicated weather display, which is gonna show two different sources of weather if I'm equipped to utilize those. We can use either the FAA ADSBN weather data that is free from the FAA, or if you have an XM weather data link installed on the aircraft, I can use a Sirius XM weather data link to display those as well. Those are selectable between the two sources if I have those equipped on the aircraft. You can see at the moment I have NEXRAD radar for regional or the continental United States. I can animate this weather by selecting the menu key and animate weather. It's going to show the current radar data for any weather systems that I might be facing. We have choices for cloud top forecasts, options for winds aloft data for several different altitudes, such as altitudes ranging from 3,000, 6,000, 9,000, et cetera. We have information such as temperatures aloft, lightning strike data, which is very handy for navigating storm cells and IFR flying. METAR information to show the ground stations, whether they are VFR or IFR currently reporting. 
any current air mets for turbulence, possibly. Sigmets for any storm cell activity or additional data. We have TFRs enabled within the ADSBN information, and it will overlay those on the map of the weather pages here as well. Any relevant current pilot reports that we might have reporting forecasts for turbulence, as well as forecasts for icing for IFR en route flying. By moving one page over, we've accessed a terrain page. If you're flying in a mountainous area or you have geographical features close to you, this is going to show any features such as mountain, valleys, areas that are either within 100 feet of our current flight altitude in the red or within 1,000 feet of our current flight altitude shown in yellow. We also have a profile view that will show the terrain along your route of flight. That way you know if you need to change altitude based on if we're gonna have any terrain conflicts. By moving one page over, you can see a really nice traffic display feature. You can see we have traffic callouts depending whether we are on the ground or even in air as we're flying along. You can see this shows current flying traffic with a target line, which is a patented unique feature of the Garmin target system. You can see here currently we have a target trend for 30 second traffic. This means relative to my current motion, the traffic display is gonna show where that competing traffic is 30 seconds from now. So it's a really great safety feature to fly when you're en route. I can select the traffic display, get their current track, ground speed, as well as a tail number call out from ADSBN. And that will let me know their general relative motion based on where I am currently in flight. If they're shaded in white, that means they're currently in air flying. However, if they're showing in brown display, that lets me know that they're currently on the ground. I need to take a look out for them. Maybe they're at a taxiway intersection or possibly they have uh, taken the runway and getting ready to depart. So the traffic display is a great safety feature to fly when you're equipped with that ADS-B in data. So I definitely highly recommend ADS-B equipment for your aircraft for the safety feature. One page over, we can access our Cirrus XM data control. So if I have a data link such as a GDL Garmin data link receiver, maybe it's a GDL51R or a GDL52R, or I might be receiving that data from another Cirrus XM enabled device. I can control my XM audio channels here for in-flight entertainment, as well as access information such as my weather and just control all of the XM data links from this page. Here we also have a general information page. This shows just the current satellites that the G3X Touch is receiving, as well as my current position and route. Over on the right side of the G3X Touch primary flight display, you can see we have an engine page. This is accessed via the multifunction features of the G3X Touch system, or if I have a primary flight display here shown with EIS indication here, I can go ahead and select that and get a shortcut to the EIS page. The GEA24 is a remote mount interface that gives us our EIS indications on the primary flight display. We have sensor packages that are available for all traditional aircraft engines that we're flying within our experimental or LSA aircraft displays today. You can see I can either have a four cylinder Lycoming or Continental display. This also has interfaces for Rotax engines, whether they are the IS computer controlled FADIC engines or the older ULS engines. We're also able to interface with the FADIC of UL power engines as well but this is very flexible. We use very generic type K or type J thermocouples that we can use almost any type of EIS sensor available on the aviation market today. This has dedicated graphs for cylinder EGT and CHT information, carb temperature information, fuel quantities, fuel flow information, as well as electrical bus health of the aircraft and fuel calculators if enabled with fuel flow data on board the aircraft. This gives us information such as endurance, no wind range, fuel remaining, 
fuel timers, et cetera. Just a really nice feature to have on board the EIS system that's gonna give us all of our fuel data in one piece. This gives us the expanded view if we choose to have that on the EIS primary flight display. But we also have that in simplified form if we have this dedicated on the primary flight display. This can be pilot configured to show on the left hand or right hand of the display if you choose to have that on there. Over on the right side of the instrument panel, we have a G3X Touch installed to serve as a multifunction flight display. This can be additional data for the pilot or it can be a dedicated display if you're flying with a passenger or another pilot within the aircraft. You can see this gives us all of the same data that we just reviewed for the primary flight display, but it gives us a full screen option for a larger area to view each one of those features and pages. Pof. That can also be changed to a split screen mode if your co-pilot prefers to have flight instruments on their side as well. It serves as an excellent dedicated multifunction display or as a backup for pilot and co-pilot. Now we will go over some of the autopilot features of the G3X Touch and the experimental system. I believe this is one of the greatest features that we have on the market today with the Garmin Autopilot. On the primary flight display, top and center, you can see the autopilot control features. This is the automatic flight control system touch point for the entire G3X touch system. You can see the AFCS control panel comes split screen on the primary flight display. Here we can access all of the autopilot features on the primary flight display, including autopilot engagement, flight director engagement, electronic stability protection, which is standard within the Garmin autopilot, and level button. We have our lateral modes here, such as steering for heading and track or from an external navigation source for GPS navigation and approach enablement. You can also see we have our vertical commands here. We can climb and descend by indicated airspeed, vertical speed, select our altitude, and control those features here using nose up or nose down on the primary flight display. This matches what is happening over the, on the GMC 507. I highly recommend the GMC Autopilot controllers because it gives us a nice dedicated place on the panel for a primary flight control system. In the center, we have our autopilot engagement modes for engaging the autopilot, flight director, and yaw damper system. We also have a dedicated level button for safety. If you get disoriented, maybe you flew inadvertently flew into the clouds or you just simply get disoriented when flying the aircraft, a quick touch of the level button will engage the autopilot and bring the aircraft to upright and level and stay that way until you command it to do something differently. Over on the left side, we have our lateral steering commands such as nav, track, heading, and approach activation. And over on the right side, we have our vertical functions, such as climb and descend by indicated airspeed, vertical speed, altitude hold selections, and navigation by VNAV. This can be utilized if you're using the vertical navigation functions of the G3X touch flight display or a GTN external IFR navigator. What the GMC 507 adds to the system are dedicated heading and track steering knob as well as the altitude selection knob. This gives us a really easy interface to command our autopilot by using the dedicated knobs on the autopilot controller. All those can still be utilized on the G3X Touch primary flight display with the similar functions available with the dual concentric knobs. The G3X Touch flight display integrates very well with external navigation sources, such as a GPS affordable two inch navigator or the GTN 650 or GTN 750 XI version as well. We can handle all of our external navigation sources, such as selecting an airport to navigate to. You can see by activating a waypoint on the GTN 650 XI that has now enabled the G3X Touch flight display to show that same airport or flight plan on its internal source as well. The GTN 650XI is also the location that I will activate any specific IFR related approach. So let's say I need to look at the procedures tab, select a GPS runway approach, 
and do a load and activate into the system. That has now taken all of that IFR approach information and displayed that on the G3X primary flight display to show all of my GPS waypoints within the approach. And now I'm ready for an IFR approach into the aircraft. You can see that has loaded the approach from the GTN IFR navigator into the G3X touch primary flight display. It shows all of my waypoint information for the IFR approach. Now I'm ready for an IFR approach into the airport. The G5 electronic flight instrument provides excellent backup capabilities to the G3X touch system. While the G5 can act as a standalone primary instrument by its own, to include information such as airspeed, altitude, and artificial horizon data, it can easily slave through the network of the experimental system to mimic the data on the G3X touch flight display. You can see these two are synced for all data such as airspeed, altitude, artificial horizon, as well as the barrow settings within the system. If there's a power failure on the aircraft and we lose all ship power, the G5 electronic flight instrument has its own four hour backup battery that will keep operating in the event of a total ship power failure. This ensures that we can get out of the clouds if we're on an IFR flight, or we can safely get to our destination or to the ground in case we lose all other primary flight instruments. The G5 being a standalone instrument as well, it has its own artificial horizon sensors and own air data sensors to where we don't lose any additional information from the flight displays or from the actual airspeed information and flight information from the sensors on the aircraft. If I still have power to the rest of the system, such as the autopilot and GPS navigator, and I just have a failure on the primary flight display of the G3X Touch, I can still shoot an IFR approved approach just using the data from the G5 electronic flight instrument. Because the G5 can control the autopilot system and still communicate with the rest of the avionics installed on the aircraft. It's a great safety feature to have in the aircraft, as, whether it is a primary or backup system. And I highly recommend this in your aircraft. Thank you for joining me today in Garmin's RV7A to get a quick overview of the experimental and LSA avionics offering from Garmin. If you have any additional questions or are curious about the other offerings that Garmin has for our experimental and LSA aircraft, please visit your local Garmin dealer or Garmin.com. And we certainly hope to see you at a future fly-in.